Every time I take the Fader Bridge to cross the River Senegal and reach the St. Louis Island, I feel like I'm on a movie set. Stories of the former colonies still float in the burning air of the early morning. In this northern part of Senegal, the ocean and the river bring some freshness to the desert's gates. Thanks to the salted or fresh water resources, many vegetables can be grown, livestock fed and fish caught. I'll have to head up the river back to the small town of Dagana, whose market I was recommended. For the moment, this is St. Louis Market, the former capital of the country that's opening its gates to me. The charcoal vendors, essential to African women cooks, are already there. The first customers can make the most of fully stocked stalls. Let's remember that women spend much of their time preparing meals and start early to allow their dishes to simmer. To get a better idea of this market, I'm meeting up with an old friend, Ali. Hello, Ali. How are you? Hello. I'm fine. And you? How are things? Good. Very good. So we're on the biggest market on St. Louis Island. Indeed. This is in Dartout market. And as you can see, I came this morning to do my shopping. Let me tell you, you'll find everything on this market. And every day, people come to restock simply because we don't have fridges at home to store food. So it's a real problem. This is a market that goes back a long time, virtually to the colonial era, so way before independence. You can get any sort of food, vegetables, and then fish and meat. So this is a market that is really very important because of its function. Yes, it provides everything the people of St. Louis need. In addition, it's very lively because there are women, men, it's very colorful, it's alive. Absolutely, absolutely, it's lively. And luckily, it's a market that takes place every day. And it's also open from dawn to dusk, so we're never late for shopping. Right, Ali, I'll let you do some shopping and I'll see you later on the market. Right, OK, see you later. See you later. OK. So I'm leaving my friend to go to the Longue de Barberie nearby. On this sand spit at the camp Ocean et Savane, I'm supposed to meet someone. So close to the ocean, it would have been a shame not to offer you a first fish recipe. This is barbecued theof with potago sauce, a must for barbecue fans. Here are the ingredients for two people. First of all, Donacion da Costa, our chef, who's also the chef at the residence hotel in St. Louis, scoops out the fish and washes it well, then stuffs it with the tomato. Then onion, the chives and bay leaf. He adds a little salt and pepper. Donacion then cuts up the garlic coarsely and places it in the gills of the fish. He also stuffs the sides. He halves the potatoes, salts them, and bakes them in a preheated oven at 150 degrees. Bake them for 20 minutes, depending on the size of the potatoes. He brushes the fish with olive oil before, then places it on the grill. As you know, fish doesn't need to cook for long. Three to four minutes on each side is enough. Flip it from time to time to prevent it from burning. While the fish is cooking on the grill, Donacion prepares the Botago sauce. He takes a block of smoked mullet roe, the famous Botago, you can find it in grocery stores, and he finally grates it so as to obtain a powder. In a hot frying pan, he begins to reduce the cream. He adds the botago, about two teaspoons full. He adjusts the seasoning with salt and pepper.
The fish is perfectly grilled. The only thing left to do for Donation is to garnish a dish for this traditional recipe from the town of St. Louis you must enjoy to the sound of the waves as they tickle the Langue de Barbary. I'm back on the Nadal Tute market. There are gradually more and more customers, but it doesn't stop some vendors who are up early from having a break. I'm looking for Ali. I can see my friend Ali. It looks like Ali's interested in a kind of bean. Ali, how's it going? Yes, good. So what are you trying to buy? I've come to the market in the morning, as you can see. At first, I don't focus on what I want to prepare. That is to say, when I get to the market, because prices are going to fluctuate a lot. So here, for example, black-eyed pea is an ingredient of many meals. It's commonly called broad bean. So I must say, there's a lot of protein in it. And besides, even in the era of slavery, in Gore, those beans were actually used to fatten slaves who hadn't reached the minimum weight of 60 kilograms. And to this day, we say that it's still very nourishing. So we cook it with meat, to make sauces, and we also use it to mix with couscous. But you can also make doughnuts with them. There we've got what we call carcade. Ah, carcade, to make juice. Red carcade, that's right. In fact, this is to make juice. You can even make ice cream with it. Ah, yes, I know. Here's something interesting. Ah, yes, there, yes, right. So here we've got what's called monkey bread. It's actually the fruit of the baobab. Let me see that. The baobab is also the national emblem. We use it to make juices. You can also make ice creams with it. And when cooking some dishes, we use the juice of the monkey bread to spice up the sauce a little. So, speaking of taste, and I know that the Senegalese like to eat food that's a little spicy, I noticed those small chili peppers. I guess that's hot, right? Ah, yes, right. That is chili. I must say that here we love to eat very, very, very spicy food. There's even a sort of chili here, you can see. That's commonly called Tyson. You know, it's like the great black American boxer named Mike Tyson. Knockout. He was so strong he used to win all his fights by a knockout. That's why we've called that chili after that boxer. It has a punchy taste. You're right, you've got it. 